Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, for being here still. And I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to talk about this specific issue of making the most of organic matter. And I would like to thank the previous speaker for the excellent talk, because it means that I don't have to talk about composting so much. I did my PhD in 1996 comparing um, different kinds of composting and based on that, I've been spent the last 20 years on these two aspects, but I including towards vermicomposting, because people think that this is a kind of special composting, but it isn't really. So the first slide shows a lovely picture for those who think that these are disgusting animals, but if you take photos from the right angle, they always come out nice. Just to go over this quickly so that people don't get too tired, all waste will have a high component of organic matter, whether there's urban, industrial, or whatever kind of waste. If, these are, if this is waste, solid waste, they will, can be treated using these procedures, aerobic digestion, You've probably heard of composting, which is the most common thing, where we have microorganisms at high temperatures, and vermicomposting is a process where they we have both the earthworms working with the microorganisms that would do all this on at lower temperatures. Everybody might have heard of this. It might seem obvious, so. You think, well, why have they called on this guy to talk about vermicompost? Because all we do is we take a handful of earthworms, we mix them with organic matter, and this will give us a vermicompost. There's a lot to be said about that, and it relates to a lot of what my colleague has already talked about. In summary, although we could go into more detail, vermicompost is a biodioxidation process of degradation and stabilization of organic matter carried out by the action, the joint action of some species of uh, earthworms that live on dendrivores and, and microorganisms. We think that this is something that is, is peculiar to itself. Earthworms or worms act as a kind of reactors, almost anaerobic digesters in their intestines. All this organic matter goes is digested through their body and will undergo a series of major processes that will produce major modifications to the communities of microorganisms in the micro in the decomposing micro in the decomposing organic matter. To strike a simile the thermophilic phase is a bit like the active phase of earthworms in the process. And then we have the ripening stage or m maturity stage, which is a, the product of the work of the microorganisms in their different facets. So food for thought. I reached a similar conclusion to what you can see here, that when we tackle a problem of dealing with organic waste, we're always going to come across a process that we can tackle in two steps. The first step will be to convert this waste into a stable product so it's not toxic and it's not going to cause any problems. But to do this, basically, in summary, we'll eliminate the pathogens, the heavy metals, and, and other organic contaminants that might persist. But depending on several issues, we can go even further in the process and then we can use this stable product and make it into a very interesting product. And this we would do summarizing by increasing the composition of humic substances, increasing the levels of the specific microbiota, the plant regulation substances, and a whole series of substances that will provides specific spe biological um, conditions. The, the definition of this would be we could call, we could take, if you choose these different options, the quality of the waste. If the quality is poor, then when we can just stabilize it. But if it's good waste, then we can use this as an organic fertilizer. 
So what's good and what's bad? We could spend hours talking about this, but basically it would depend on the, the how the waste is managed. Normally, apart from the hazardous waste, we don't want to mix this, but as soon as waste is collected, we can classify it as good waste. A particular example of this, one of the things we've been doing for a couple of years or three now, and we have the preliminary results in Galicia, we produce quite a lot of wine. Here in the Canary Islands, this could have a similar thing. It generates over a million tons of waste or lees because this is quite an interesting material for it. We can, from this, we can get bioactive compounds. Chaff will be dealt with uh, fatty acids and polyphenols, which are found in the grape seed. So if we put these in major um, reactors and do vermicomposting on this, using earthworms, in up to a few days or a few weeks, the process can be accelerated and done quite quickly. And this will give us, we'll come to the time where we separate what I call the vermiumus from the seeds. So it's a simple process. You can separate the seeds in order to get polyphenols and fatty acids. And the verdiumus free of polyphenols, which are far more interesting as a fertilizer. This process is one that we've patented in 2015, this pro separation process. And a colleague of mine, a Canary Island guy from Tenerife, although he works in the Professor at Castilla-La Mancha in Toledo, and he's a very famous enzymologist, we found in the substrates of this material, we've found um, quant major quantities of enzymes in that they can detox the, the pesticides so they have the potential of being used to clean contaminated soils. Soils have been contaminated with pesticides. And I'm sure that many of you will be dreaming about solutions like this in line what what Professor Florian said before. Just to give you an idea, if you look at this photo here with a handful of vermicompost, there are also microorganisms that the population of Af more a higher population than the population of Africa, China, and India altogether. Very often, the problem is that we're too big or they're too small in order to understand each other. With the new techniques that w that are available, that have just become available, with meta transcription that enable enables us to study these microorganism communities. Up until very recently, we treated them all as the same. They're all microorganisms. But there are thousands and thousands of different species that produces thousands and thousands of enzyme substances that we're only just starting to discover. And this is fundamentally important in the management of, of waste and the humus that we have in soil. So we ran some trials to convince people that this was true. We went to a winery and they allowed, they asked them to allow to, to carry out some experiments. We marked out some plots and we did this with agricultural engineers working on the different strains. They do the chemical fertilization. So we said, OK, these are the control strains that you use for these wines and the other ones we will apply our vermicompost to. And this is what we found. There was an increase that we were surprised about because we didn't even real, re know whether we were covering all their chemical needs, which comes directly from the biological properties, what we call the, the non-nutritional um, properties of the vermicompost. What we're also seeing, we're characterizing other kinds of issues dealing with quality and I don't have anything but preliminary data, but we did find that the quality data, and the, this enables the winery, they can spray the foliage to reduce the disease on the leaves. And at the same time, the wineries that are interesting, they want to reduce their spending on pesticide, which gives them more, more organic wine which means that will lead to management models like this, which is what we're aiming for. So based, we need to convince, and this is just an example. This can be taken into any other sector. In this case, 
we have a waste, an organic matter. The waste can be converted into a resource to pr give added value to companies working in this sector. Thank you very much.